Gossips used to be human. When you ask what's universal to humankind, people have claimed all sorts of lofty things. Music, language, reason, mastery of fire and cooking and cuisine, or even opposable thumbs. But sadly enough, what's most universal of all might be gossips. Every single culture in the history of humankind has been plagued by gossips. Humans' religions through the ages have proclaimed stricture after stricture against gossip. Judaism in the Old Testament. Christianity in the New Testament. Islam in the Quran. Buddhism in the Pali Canon. It goes on and on, which tells you how bad the problem really is. But at least gossips used to be human. I've been watching our societies become increasingly populated by non-humans over the past generation, populated by artificial intelligences, from a trickle of AIs in the pioneering days to mass immigration into our societies today. It's a tectonic shift that our imaginations still struggle to come to grips with. And I'm guilty of having been a part of that tectonic shift because back when I was a young PhD student, AI was dominated by rule-based systems, systems based on mathematical logic. And I fought with my advisor for six years he gave me a tiny little problem. He said, look, we've built one of the first dialogue systems, you know, the sort of ancestors to Siri and so on. And we just have this little problem. The user comes up and says, how do I cut the disk space? And we can tell from the syntactic parser that the verb is cut and the direct object is disk space. But the problem is when we try to plug it into the next step, the semantic interpreter, it's got to tell you what is that next step? Is it cut as in cut bread, so meaning slice, or cut the grass, meaning shorten, or cut class, meaning skip, or cut the cheese? There are so many senses. You just have to go and write a little module that will figure out which sense of cut that is. Do that over the summer. So I went away. Less than one week, I came back to him. I said, there is no way on earth you can solve this with logic. Because this is all shades of gray. This is all ambiguity. This depends on the context. This is the sort of thing that we do so well, which is not based on logic. It is not based on reason. It is based on our intuitive abilities to integrate shades of gray from many sources and to make that our own subjective decision. And that is the root of human intelligence. And it took six years of screaming fights, not me screaming, my advisor screaming. And finally, six months before I graduated, he said to me one day after I had given him yet another draft of a chapter, he said, wow, Takai, this is the most amazing thing ever. I finally understand what you've been saying all these years. And that made me the happiest young student ever. And by that time, I had been recruited to go with 400 other faculty who came from UC Berkeley, where I was, and Stanford, and MIT, and Toronto, and Oxford, and Cambridge, uh, to go found a super ambitious new research university in the American style in Hong Kong, which is a remarkable story that I'd love to share with you over a beer someday. But when I arrived, I found myself thinking, where should I apply this new paradigm that I'd been fighting for to make machines learn by themselves from big data? And I decided to make them learn how to translate between languages because Hong Kong, like many other places, is struggling with a multilingual, multicultural problem. And so specifically, I made machines learn how to translate between English and Chinese for the first time. And this, this is how I met 
one of the creators of artificial gossips that has shaken the news sphere. Many of you have probably heard about a company called Cambridge Analytica. This company worked to use AI to gather and spread information on a massive scale so as to influence the outcome of voting in numerous countries, including the US and the UK. And what eventually emerged is the news that Cambridge Analytica was backed by a reclusive, brilliant hedge fund billionaire named Robert Mercer. But before he took those Wall Street offers 20 some years earlier that made him a billionaire, Mercer was a computer scientist at IBM Watson, working on human language technology or natural language processing. And specifically, he was working on getting machines to learn to translate between English and French. The Association for Computational Linguistics is the main international organization for natural language processing. And about six years ago, they decided to establish an honor called the ACL Fellows. In its history of over half a century, the field had never had anything like Nobel or Fields or Fellow honors. So to catch up with that, they decided that on this one-shot historic occasion, they would name 17 founding fellows. And for breakthroughs that led to AIs like Google Translate or Microsoft Translator or Yahoo Translate, the two founding fellows they named were Mercer and me, which is why I've been struggling and thinking a lot about the consequences of the work that we do developing artificial intelligence and machine learning. Those consequences are enormous. Our societies today already are no longer exclusively human. In a few short years, AIs have become our secretaries, our navigators, our dictation assistants, our translators, our shoppers, our matchmakers, our curators, our journalists and our news clippers, our house cleaners, our chauffeurs, our hedge fund traders, our DJs, our customer service representatives, and our gossips. All our cultures and religions have warned through the ages against idle chatter. Quarrels, conflicts, gossip, slander, condemnation, calumny, all idle chatter. And now we've gone and created chatterbots, artificial gossips. Now, gossips do two main things. They hear and they speak. Maybe you know this word, quidnunc. This means a person who seeks to know all the latest news or gossip. In other words, a busybody. This is the type of gossip who likes to hear. And on the other hand, you have the gossip monger. This is a person who habitually passes on confidential information or spreads rumors. This is the gossip who likes to speak. Well, artificial gossips are exponentially dangerous regardless of whether the gossip is true or false. When gossip is false or private, artificial gossip mongers spread fake news and confidential information like human gossip mongers do, but exponentially more dangerously. Douglas Adams in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy observed that nothing travels faster than the speed of light with the possible exception of bad news, which obeys its own special laws. Well, now we have artificial gossip mongers to give gossip even more exponential reach and speed. Gossiping fake news and confidential information are powerful ways to change society's views, even in the absence of evidence. And it doesn't take that much. There's a recent study from UPenn and the City University of London that suggests that even if only roughly a 25% minority of a group starts to spread an opinion, that is enough to tip the majority to switch opinions. 
And in this age of botnets, artificial gossips easily account for more than 25% of our gossips. Artificial gossips push us past the tipping point for fake news to change society's views. Just like humans, artificial gossip mongers weaponize the power of suggestion. Just like human gossips, they spread unevaluated claims that are based on superficial appearance. They promote hearsay rather than evidence. They promote stereotyping. As an old Korean proverb says, words have no wings, but they can fly a thousand miles. And even when gossip is true, artificial quidnuncs gain social power just like human quidnuncs do, but exponentially more dangerously. In The Psychology of Rumors, which is a social psychology classic from 1947, Gordon Alpert and Leo Postman point out how gossip serves to create a sense of cohesion among various groups of people, but to take a divisive stance against someone else. Gossip actually becomes a social control mechanism that gives power to whoever does it. Gossiping releases endorphins and gives pleasure. Propagating gossips helps them escape from an unpleasant routine, escape from negative feelings or stress. Gossips become the center of attention for the folks who are receptive to their rumors. If you think Game of Thrones Varys is scary, our artificial quidnuncs are potentially far more terrifying masters of whispers. Cambridge Analytica, for example, was an artificial quidnunc. Facebook is an artificial quidnunc from which gossip can unintentionally leak, just as happens with most human quidnuncs. It's hard to keep a secret. And in this case, leaking from one artificial quidnunc to others, including Cambridge Analytica. But Siri, Alexa, Cortana, Google Assistant, they're all artificial quidnuncs. And again, it can be hard to avoid leaking what you overhear. Even Alexa recently accidentally spread a private conversation that it overheard in a home. Whether our AIs are hearing gossip or speaking gossip, whether they're artificial quidnuncs or artificial gossip mongers, we exist already today in a tangled society of human and artificial gossips. So here's the question I want to ask each of you. Have you joined the artificial gossips? Are you an unwitting part of the network of the little birds? Have you joined the artificial gossips in creating divisions rather than bridging them? Gossip ostracizes persons or groups. Exponential artificial gossip disruptively ostracizes persons or groups. Exponential divisiveness means that we face the threat, the existential threat of an extinction event. What are each of us doing about our own habits to prevent the elimination of our civilization? You may have heard the ancient Chinese proverb, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. It's frequently misused in the West to imply that you're avoiding moral responsibility by looking the other way. But on the contrary, it's a Buddhist summary of the Confucian tenet. Look not at what is contrary to propriety. Listen not to what is contrary to propriety. Speak not what is contrary to propriety. Make no movement which is contrary to propriety. This reminds us to avoid dwelling on evil thoughts and to instead delight in creating concord. Or more recently, Marie Curie, be less curious about people and more curious about ideas. We used to have to cope with yellow journalists, tabloid journalists. Now we have to cope with yellow chatterbots, tabloid chatterbots. You used to read news stories. Now, the news stories read you. 
So don't be a stereotype. Don't be a cliche. Don't let artificial gossips make you an unwitting part of the divisiveness. When you hear artificial gossip, try to reorientate your perspective. When artificial gossip mongers slander or attack someone, try instead to relate. When artificial quidnuncs are listening in on you, translate your ideas into ideas worth spreading. As a species, we humans face major survival challenges, climate change, vast wealth disparities, arms proliferation. Our only hope may be AIs. We cannot afford to turn them into artificial gossips. Take personal responsibility for being mindful, being aware of AIs when they are watching you, when they're hearing you, when they're speaking to you, especially in this brave new world of artificial gossips. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Thank you.